Welcome to another history lesson with me, Mrs. Allen. Today we're looking at the chronology of the civil rights movement. We'll cover the main events and the positives and negatives of those events. Before we start, though, it's important just to look at the background. Slavery was abolished in the USA in 1865, but racism, particularly in the South, continued. Black people lived in constant fear of being attacked or even killed, and facilities were segregated, with black people's facilities being far worse. In response to the treatment of black people, the NAACP was set up in 1909. This group proved to be very successful throughout the civil rights movement. The First World War gave some black Americans a unique opportunity to see what life was like outside America. For the first time, they were able to use the same facilities as white people, and it showed them what could be possible. This new knowledge feared many white Americans. The Second World War was also a catalyst for change, with many returning home after the war demanding better treatment. During this time, Truman was trying to make progress. However, the Congress at the time made this impossible. They rejected plans to introduce laws which would help end lynching and unfair voting. Now we come on to the main events of the civil rights movement. In 1954, the Supreme Court finally ruled that segregation could never be equal. Reverend Brown was now able to send his daughter to a white school which was closer to where they lived. Unfortunately, change was minimal. By 1956, in six southern states, not a single black child went to school with a white child. Our next important event is the Montgomery bus boycott. In this well-known event, Rosa Parks refused to give up her seat. She was subsequently arrested and this led to the boycott of Montgomery buses. The non-violent protest was highly successful and Montgomery buses were desegregated. Though this was good progress, there was still a long way to go. White-only restaurants and theatres still existed in Montgomery and across southern states. Our next event is Little Rock in 1957. As desegregation laws came into effect, Central High decided to admit nine black students. White students and their parents were unhappy about this. The racist governor, Orville Forbus, sent state soldiers to the school to stop black students entering. Because of the violence towards the students, President Eisenhower sent 1,000 US soldiers to protect the black students on their way to and from school. This event attracted worldwide media attention and it is believed that it directly influenced the Civil Rights Act of 1957. However, for the majority of black Americans, very little changed. Racism was deeply rooted, particularly in the South. The first legal change was the Civil Rights Act of 1957. This act made very disappointing progress, with not a single black voter added to the register in the South. The sit-ins in 1960 and 61 is where we start to see more progress. What started with four protesters grew to numbers of around 700,000. The sit-ins gained the civil rights movement huge publicity. White people showed solidarity with black protesters and it showed the power of non-violent protest. As a result of the sit-ins, many lunch counters were desegregated. Our next event is the Freedom Rides of 1961. In 1960, the US Supreme Court ruled that segregation in restrooms, waiting rooms and restaurants was illegal. The group Corps tested this ruling by travelling by bus from Washington to New Orleans. They were met with great violence, but this did help to attract huge publicity. This led to great progress with the end of segregation in airports, railways and bus stations. Many cities were still highly segregated. Birmingham in Alabama was notorious for police brutality and the local Ku Klux Klan was one of the most violent. During demonstrations led by Martin Luther King, children were arrested and water cannons and dogs were used on the marches. The media once again were important for highlighting these horrors. In the end, an agreement was reached where lunch counters, restrooms and drinking fountains would be desegregated. The March on Washington in 1963 is one of the most famous events of the civil rights movement. Partly due to its size as a quarter of a million people took part, 
but also because of Martin Luther King's memorable I Have a Dream speech. Though there were some critics, such as Malcolm X, many believe it put significant pressure on JFK and a new Civil Rights Act followed shortly after. The Civil Rights Act of 1964 said that discrimination on the basis of race in any or all public places in the USA was banned. This was great progress and many politicians now felt that the law had gone as far as it could. However, civil rights campaigners did not stop there. They wanted more to be done in terms of housing and voting. As a result, voting rights marches continued. On one march, Jimmy Lee Jackson was killed. This led to the Selma to Montgomery marches. There was three in total. The first march became known as Bloody Sunday as 600 peaceful marchers were met with tear gas and violence. This sparked a national outrage. Martin Luther King led peaceful, symbolic marches, which grew to numbers of 25,000. The final law change was the Voting Rights Act of 1965. This act marked the end of the civil rights campaign in the South, and within three years, most of the black population in the South had registered to vote. This gave them the power to elect individuals who represented them and their needs. I now suggest you make a timeline, putting these events on in chronological order and using highlighters to show positives and negatives. Good luck.